In the Segmentum Tempestus, situated within a small, peaceful system, sits the planet of Verid. Under the supervision of the planetary governors of the Ibrahid family, it has been maintained as a feudal world, its technology stalled out on par with that of Earth in the 10th century. The only exception to this is the distribution of lasguns to the kings, in exchange for young men and women trained in their use to fulfill the imperial ties. These young men and women are formed into Cadia Pan regiments and sent across the galaxy to fight the Imperium's wars, promised rank and privilege should they survive long enough to retire. For generations, this system held strong, as only the occasional veteran returned from the war and took the title of king to produce a new generation of warriors. As the Indominus Crusade began, the system ran into its first problem, as half of regiment finished their 15-year tour of duty, and there simply wasn't enough positions of power to give to them all. The current planetary governor, Ranks Ibrahid, was a corrupt and inept man, good only at appeasing his superiors and fulfilling his own wanton desire. Lacking the charisma and savvy of his predecessors, he declared that the veterans would be given cushy jobs as part of the PDF. To the veterans, this position was an insult. They had seen the wonders of the galaxy, faced the monstrous Tyranids, drowned traitorous Stardis in Lasfire, and crossed blades with Dracarian One. Being forced to now continue to serve, and settle for wine that tasted like piss and run-down forts, instead of the majestic castles they were promised. The veterans were none too pleased. This was only exacerbated by the luxury they knew that Ranks Ibra had enjoyed, and so the veterans began to turn to treason. They were still loyal to the Emperor. They did not seek to have the planet secede from the Imperium. They only wished to see the end of the Ibra had line, and to receive their just rewards as the new planetary governors. The idea spread among the commanders of the various units like a creeping poison, infecting one after another. It wouldn't be long before they were all on board, and the planet rose up in revolt. At the centre of this web sat Octus Huge, the commander of the Skulls unit. Among all the veterans, he was the most well-respected, and his men the most accomplished. All knew that it would be he who sat atop the planet should their revolution succeed, and they all wished for it. Unfortunately for them, Ranks Ibrahid was very effective at appeasing his masters. The many regiments he sent to join the Astra Militarum had earned him a great deal of favour. When he began to suspect something was afoot, he sent a request for assistance to Terra, and it was answered by the Inquisitor, Draxia Winterbatch. She landed upon the planet and began to investigate the claims. It didn't take long for Inquisitor Winterbatch to uncover the treason. She immediately sent word out to a Space Marine chapter, the Rigid Serpents, requesting their aid. Due to past dealings, the two had an amicable relationship, and Lieutenant David was dispatched, alongside twenty Marines, to quell the dissent. Upon arriving and meeting with the Inquisitor, David concluded the most effective use of his men would be to take out the rebellion at its roots and kill Commander Octus. The rigid serpents were renowned infiltrators, their entire chapter equipped with Phobos armor, and terror tactics such as these were their speciality. And so the marines set out to assassinate the commander, killing him and his men in a gruesome display leaving no trace but a few traumatized survivors in their wake to tell their story. Operation Skulltaker had begun. Today's game is a 500 point solo game of Warhammer 40k 9th edition, played between Space Marines and the Astra Militarum. This battle is something of a mix between matched play and narrative play, as both armies are battleforged but have been built more around the story being told than any particularly competitive playstyle. This game will last for a maximum of 5 turns. If the Space Marines successfully kill Commander Octus Huge in that time, they will win. If not, the Astra Militarum forces will emerge victorious. The Space Marine army is led by David, a lieutenant in Phobos armor. He has the Master of the Vanguard Warlord trait and is equipped with a Ghost Weave cloak. 
He is accompanied by a five-man infiltrator squad with an infiltrator comms array and a five-man incursor squad, as well as a ten-man reaver squad equipped with grapnel launchers. The Astra Militarum army is led by Commander Octus Huge, Acadian commander in Acadian command squad. He has the Grand Strategist Warlord trait and wears the Death Mask of Alanius. His Skulls unit consists of three units of Cadian shock troops with Drumfred autoguns on their sergeants. These units are referred to as the Red, Yellow, and Blue squads and are equipped with a pair of plasma guns, grenade launchers, and flamers respectively. In addition to the shock troops, there is a squad of Kassakin and a 10 man unit of Tempestus Scions each equipped with two hotshot volley guns and two plasma guns. The Astra Militarum army deploys within the fort. The Kassakin have the recon operator's doctrine, and so deploy in the gate of the fort and make their initial move out to take up an offensive stance against the oncoming space marines. The red and yellow squads both set up on the walls at the front, while the blue squad hangs back to guard the command squad and prepare an ambush with their flamers. At the rear of the fort, the Tempestus Scions are set up to keep vigilant for the oncoming Space Marines. The Space Marines deploy David and their incursors and infiltrators in concealed positions outside the fort, taking cover in the forest. The Reaver Squad, meanwhile, sets up in reserves, waiting to deploy next turn with their outflank ability. The game begins with the Space Marines moving through the woods, maintaining their cover as they approach the fort. With the Kassakin now caught in their crossfire, both squads open fire. The infiltrators kill two of them, while the incursors kill three more. The withering fire causes four of the five remaining Kassakin to flee. This was an incredible run of bad luck, with the Astra Militarum player rolling three twos on four dice. Hearing the gunfire outside the fort, Octus Huge barks orders into the radio for Yellow Squad to fire in ranks upon the intruders. The lone remaining Kassakin sprints towards the incursors and levels his plasma gun at them. He sets it to supercharged and opens fire. The blast of plasma connects with one incursor, punching a hole through his helmet and killing him instantly. Unfortunately, after years of service, the gun's cooling systems have degraded, and even this little stream of fire is enough to overheat it and the emergency vents kick in, dumping a superheated cloud around it and scorching the unfortunate Kassakin alive. The Yellow Squad opens fire on the incursors as well, with ingrained precision. Despite the large volume of fire from their las guns and grenade launchers, they only manage to inflict a single wound this turn. The Red Squad, meanwhile, opens fire on the infiltrators. Their las guns manage to inflict a single wound, while the plasma guns fire at their regular setting and manage to deal two more wounds, killing a Space Marine. The Space Marines continue their advance through the fire, the infiltrators remaining in cover while the incursors emerge from the trees to push towards the gate of the fort. Both units open fire on the Red Squad. Under the withering bolt of fire, the Cadian-style training the soldiers had undergone prompt them to stand strong, taking wounds that would fell normal men in stride. Even so, five of them perish in the hail of bullets. David, meanwhile, has moved out towards the flank of the battlefield in anticipation of the arrival of reinforcements. His ten-man reaver squad arrives on the side of the battlefield, hugging the base of the wall for cover this turn. Having confirmed the arrival of his men, David turns his attention to the yellow squad and guns down two of them. The Skulls unit had anticipated a flanking attack like this, and so had deployed their Tempestus Scions along the rear to prevent the reavers coming in from the back as they wished. Seeing that they had now arrived from the east instead, the Scions make an advance move, rolling a six for how far they can go and get into position to open fire next turn. While this is going on, the Yellow Squad again receives orders to fire in ranks, and they do so once again with ingrained precision. Under the hail of fire, two more wounds are inflicted upon the Incursor Marines, and one of them falls. The Red Squad fires on the Infiltrator Squad again and kills one of them with their las guns while the plasma guns fire supercharged rounds. They miss all of their shots, and one of the guns overheats with a lethal effect on its wielder. David directs the incursors and infiltrators towards the gate. The incursors make it, while both David and the infiltrators hit the wall, ready to follow in the next turn. The reavers, meanwhile, 
use their grapnel launchers to scale the walls. As they come over the edge, they open fire on both the Tempestus Scions and Yellow Squad in their characteristic shock and awe tactics. They kill one of each and charge at the Yellow Squad. The Yellow Squad is too dazed by the spectacular display and fail to rally themselves in time to fire Overwatch. With ten of the Adeptus Astartes rushing seven humans, it's no surprise that they're all cut down before they can react, and the Reavers continue their advance, racing towards the Red Squad. Commander Octus is quick to react to the changing situation on the battlefield. He snatches the Master Vox and barks orders to the Tempestus Scions to fire in ranks of the oncoming Reavers before falling back himself away from the wall to get some distance from the approaching threat. At the same time, the Blue Squad swings around the corner to fire on the Incursors. Both the Red Squad and Tempestus Scions fire on the Reavers and each manage to kill one of them. Meanwhile, the Blue Squad turns the gate into a killing field and guns down two of the three Incursors with their Lasgun fire and flamers. With only two turns left to kill Octus, the Space Marines have to pick up the pace a little bit. David and the Infiltrators join the lone remaining Incursor in the gateway and they open fire on the Blue Squad, killing almost half of them. They follow this up with a devastating charge and manage to cut them all down. Above them, the Reavers fire on the Red Squad as they rush forward, not breaking stride as they gun down the small contingent of guardsmen. One tosses a stun grenade off the wall to disorient the Blue Squad, rendering them unable to fire overwatch at the oncoming marines. Once they're past the Blue Squad, the Reavers descend from the wall with their grapnel launchers, landing on the ground in a fluid motion to charge forward, combat knives at the ready as they descend on the command squad. They loop around the soldiers and begin their grim duty, cutting down the members of the command squad until only Octus Huge remains. Octus strikes back with his power sword, but fails to do any damage. Knowing that reinforcements are on the way, and that selling his life to see the last of the Space Marines perish would make him a martyr and see the rebellion through to its end, he makes a desperate attempt to break out from the Space Marines' encirclement. Unfortunately, the Reavers were ready for this, and they cut down the fleeing commander. With their mission done, David calls for a withdrawal, and the rigid serpents rapidly begin picking up their wounded and dead, removing any trace of their presence except for the bloody results of their work. The Tempestus Scions watch, but wisely choose not to open fire again, knowing all too well that to continue the fight will spell their doom. When the other commanders arrive, they recount the attack of the Space Marines to their comrades. The grim news is enough to dissuade them, and the rebellion was brought to an end before it began, marking Operation Skulltaker as a resounding success. If you enjoyed this battle report, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Every bit helps the channel grow and ensure there are plenty more Warhammer battle reports to come. If you have a request for a particular matchup you'd like to see, a specific army list, or just your favourite faction getting some love, let me know about it in the comments section below. Next week we're going back to Warhammer Fantasy with the Battle of New Kuron, a 2000 points battle between the Bretonians and Vampire Counts. This battle will continue the story of Alex Schott's adventures in the Border Princes region. Normally this is where I'd review the tactics used in the battle, but for me Warhammer 40k is a bit more difficult to provide analysis for, as it's a lot more gamey than Warhammer Fantasy, and there's a very strong competitive scene. I'm not nearly well versed enough in it to be able to truly comment on improvements that could be made in the game, and it also doesn't really gel well with my interest in wargaming as a storytelling device, so I ended up playing a bit looser with the structure of this game. While the armies were built according to matched play, the scenario itself was very much in line with open play, and the armies were both built to fit the story more than they were for competitive viability. Because of this, the game doesn't really resemble most Warhammer 40k battle reports. I'm not sure how many more of these I'll make, we'll have to see how this video performs. If I do play more 40k, I might play 3rd edition instead, as much like 6th edition fantasy, it's the one I grew up with and I think it suits my style more. If you'd like to see more battle reports in this format, either with 9th edition or 3rd edition, do let me know. But with all that said, I would be remiss not to give you a few thoughts. So I think the Kassikin being deployed forward was a bit too bold, but also that was a big run of bad luck, and the Space Marines might have performed better if I'd actually remembered the doctrines and made use of them.